This past weekend, I thought um, we went down to Tallahassee, played in an outstanding environment uh, for their homecoming. And, um, you know, our guys, I thought we played a little bit better this week. Uh, we were in the game uh, late, and we gave ourselves a chance to win the football game. Um, but we just came up a little bit short. I think we gave a touchdown with about 30 seconds left to go in the game. But, um, again, we you know we played a really good FAMU team. And uh, guys went down there, we gave it our best shot. Just didn't play as well as we wanted or would have liked. But um, we worked to get better this week. What was your message to the team after the ball game? You know, I, I see us making a lot of strides, and we you know we're improving in a lot of areas. But uh, again, you know, the penalties hit you, and uh, you know, you shoot yourself in the foot. So we, you know, again, we have to clean that up. And, and um, again, their effort is outstanding. Um, I just think we have to pay a little more attention to detail. But uh, I thought our guys fought hard, and um, you know, we gave ourselves a chance to win. And that's you know, for the most part, you can ask. But Thorn Cutman, very good football team, explosive, probably one of the fastest teams in the conference. Um, you know, we do have a short week, so uh, we'll try to maximize our time. Um, we, you know, we'll still make some adjustments uh, schematically and, and throw some wrinkles in our game plan. But, uh, you know, for the most part, it's not about Bethune Cutman. It's, you know, it's about us. And we just have to work to get better. And, um, you know, that's our message with the guys. You know, we have to get better. We have to improve, you know, week in and week out. 96 rushing yards against FAMU. What, what has to happen this week is Bethune to kind of up that number a little bit? Ooh, uh, you know, I think we have to do a better job of executing uh, up front, you know, getting hats on hats. And I thought we had a, you know, a good game plan um, against FAM. Um, they started stacking the boxes on us a little bit, and the safeties were getting involved in the run game. So that's why we had to throw it a little bit more and, you know, take some shots. But, uh, you know, we, we have to take what folks give us. And, like I said, fam tried to stack the box with the state with the safeties. So uh, with Cookman, you know, we're gonna come up with the same plan. You have to be able to run the football, um, take some pressure off the young kid, uh, Pee Wee. But um, uh, we'll come up with a game plan. Now I think we'll be able to have a little bit a little bit more success this week. The flip side of that is you held them to 77 yards rushing, so you have to be pleased with your your defensive line, your front seven, to kind of keep them from dominating the run game. Yeah. Um, how do you kind of carry that over to the Bethune Cookman game? Well, you know, we have to be sound defensively. And I thought as far as their design runs, I thought we did a good job of fitting the run. We did a much better job tackling this week. But, uh, you know, one thing that killed us up front was, was the quarterback scrambling. And um, a couple times we let him out of the pocket. A couple times, you know, he extended the play and, and um, you know, found people open late downfield. So uh, I think just defensively overall, uh, we have to get a little bit better, you know, as we can play together as a unit. But I was pleased with our rush defense last week and, you know, um, uh, they have a great rushing attack, but Thorne Cookman does. So we'll have a work cut out for us again this week. Coach, how, how different is it for you guys to have two games in a row at home? Uh, you, you've been on the road uh, five out of the first seven, seven games or whatever, and this will be the first time you'll have consecutive games. You'll be able to kind of like relax a little bit, being in, in, you know, in the comfort of your own home. How, how is that different for you guys? You know what? I have no clue who we have at the Cookman, and I didn't know if it was at home or away. You know, we're week by week here. So, you know, that we're, you know, solely focused on Bethune Cutman. But, um, it, you know, it's huge to be at home. And especially, you know, with the young team like we have, we have seven seniors, I think, that travel. And, uh, you know, when you bring those young guys on the road, there's a lot of distractions, a lot of stuff going on. So uh, it, it helps tremendously, especially, you know, being able to play here at O'Kelly Reddit with our fans and our students. Um, they're so supportive and they come out. So uh, we're, we're definitely excited to be back home. You know well in advance. This, what the schedule is. Right. But when it becomes game week and you see Thursday game, do you ever just think like, oh, heck, like that's a short week, a short preparation, a shorter time we were able to get in and mold our game plan? No, not at all. And, and you know, it's a short week for them too. So, you know, that doesn't affect us. You know, the schedule is what the schedule is. And, uh, I, you know, I love Thursday night games. It's an opportunity for us to be able to play on national television and um, be able to, you know, show our brand and show what North Carolina Central is about. So uh, our guys are excited about playing, you know, national television. And um, uh, I think we'll be up for the challenge. I'm not going to say it's impossible, but how hard is it to win games when you can't uh, get a consistent running game and rush for more than 100 yards as a team? Uh, you got to be able to run the football. You have to. But, I mean, you see this, that FAM has 77 yards rushing and they beat us. So, you know, it, it's about being able to take what the defense gives you. And if they load the box, you have to be able to, you know, connect with some passes. So, uh, you know, you have to be able, like I said, you have to be able to take what they give you. And, and you know, obviously we, we would like to rush for more than 96 yards, 
But at the same time, it's about executing, whether it's the run game or the passing game. How did, how did Pee Wee handle that environment? You know, it was their homecoming on the road. Obviously, he put up some pretty good numbers, and you always talk about how even a kill he is. Was he pretty much the same way uh, on that road game Saturday? Yeah, definitely. And, you know, you see him pregame. I mean, he's not excited, jumping around and hooting and hollering and all that stuff. At halftime, you know, he went in and uh, listened to, you know, coaches make the adjustments. And then, you know, after the game, obviously he was disappointed uh, uh, with the, you know, overall performance of the team. But, you know, with, with him and his leadership qualities, I think that's what makes him a winner and makes him a really good leader. Because, you know, he doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low. And as a leader, you can't do that. You have to have what we call a thermostat, for, uh, you know, uh, uh, attitude about yourself. And you can't get too high, you know, can't get too low. Davis got a rookie of the week uh, in the conference, and he, you know he is your quarterback or whatnot. How, how are you feeling about his development, especially with him being a freshman and uh, being in the first year of your program? You know, he's he when we recruited him, we knew what he could do, and that's the type of young man that we want in our program. And I thought, you know, when he came in, uh, he got a chance to play, you know, behind Micah, and I thought Micah did a really good job of molding him, and you know, explaining him, you know, what it, what it takes to be a good college quarterback. And unfortunately, Micah went down, but he's been an outstanding teammate you know, and helping him with his development. But, you know, week in and week out, you see Pee Wee develop and grow as a leader and as a young man. And um, I'm just, you know, pleased about, you know, the direction he's headed uh, with him, you know, uh, leading this, you know, our offense now. See, um, Cyrus Stanback is, is in the starting lineup this week. He's a guy who's he's one of the <laughs> rare guys who was on that uh, Celebration Bowl team. Uh -huh. Then he left and he came back to the program. How how's he eased his what not ease, but worked his way back into not only the program but into the starting lineup here at the NCCU? Well, we have a lot of depth at defensive line. And I think he might, I believe he's the only person on this team that was that was on that championship team, if I'm not mistaken. Um, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, you know, he he works really hard. And when you know, when we came in, um, you know, he was he was down on the depth chart a little a little bit and he just comes to work every day. He has a positive attitude. He always walks around with a smile on his face. And, um, you know, he's, he's become a leader uh, on that defensive line. And that's a very close-knit group. And those guys really push each other and try to make each other better. But, um, you know, we evaluate guys, you know, every week. And, you know, whoever has the best week of practice is the guys that's going to start that week. Is that a good sign for the rest of the team that, hey, you can start at the bottom of the depth chart or down on the depth chart and do your work, you can make it to the starting lineup from week to week? Definitely. And, you know, you know, you hear guys say that coaches have favorites. You hear that, <clears throat> excuse me, back in, you know, middle school or high school. That's crazy. You know, coaches trying to win. So we're going to play the best guys. And, you know, whoever's preparing like they want to win and preparing and working the hardest, uh, that give us the best chance to win the guys that are going to start or get the bulk of the playing time that week. Now, you know, we play a whole lot of guys on both sides of the ball. So, you know, just because you start doesn't mean, you know, other guys aren't getting reps. But, you know, we talked about uh, B. Mills last week. Uh, Brian Mills, he wasn't a starter at the beginning of the year. But, you know, guys work hard. And, you know, as, as a coach, I think you have to reward guys that are, that are putting forth, you know, that effort. Well, Cyrus, the guy, when he came back, just kind of kept his head down and worked. Like, he didn't carry himself like he was owed anything because he had played on that championship team a couple years ago. Oh, no. You know, it, that, that was back then. You know, it's been a long time since we won a championship, you know, a couple of years now. So uh, we, don't, we don't talk about, you know, back in the day and what happened then. And I don't talk about championship teams that I was on. So, you know, of course. So, um, you know, it's all about, you know, tomorrow and this weekend. So, you know, he'll, he'll give guys um, more so that, that uh, mentor type deal, I guess you could say. But as far as, you know, trying to help them be, you know, as far as being a leader. But uh, we don't talk about a whole lot of, you know, what happened three, four, five years ago. What have you seen from, well, let me rephrase the question. The Bethune Central Series, seems like the last couple of years, always been down to the wire, last couple of plays. That's always across the MEAC, it seems like, especially with guys you play. What, what is it about those games, those conference games, that they write, they write down to the wire, it seems like, every week? God, you know, conference play, guys are fighting for their life. You know, that's – every game is so much parity in the conference. And, and, you know, you have to come to play week in and week out. And um, I think with, with this uh, Central and Cookman game, like you said, the last three years, uh, last year when, you know, game went over – went into overtime. Uh, the year before, they beat us with a Hail Mary, uh, the last seconds of the game. 
Um, and, the, you know, the year before that, it was another one possession game. So, um, you know, I think, you know, once you get in conference play, guys, everybody knows what they're fighting for and what they're playing for. So, uh, you know, it was the same thing with Fam or, excuse me, Morgan last week, two weeks ago. Last five times we played Morgan, it was a one possession game. So um, we know they're going to come to play, and uh, we're going to do the same. I imagine games like that aren't really good for your health. You, you'd rather be, be decided by the fourth quarter as opposed to stressing out <laughs> in the fourth quarter of games, a one possession game. <laughs> hey, listen, when I came here, uh, you know, all my hair was black and everything, you know, I had a nice little hairline. Not, now I'm starting like Frankie Beverly, you know, with the salt and pepper and the, and the goatee and everything. You know, my hair's thinning out a little bit. So these penalties killing me, close games killing me, but it's all good. <laughs> This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.